properties and see what areas of land are being and hard given hard as work. service plots to people like myself who are thinking of self-building their own home. And just tell us, how much money have you got to spend on this house? Probably about 220 which I think is a doable budget, really. Um, I've got a full-time job and the majority of that is a mortgage, but I have worked hard to save up as much as I can to be able to buy a plot and to put towards the house build. I just don't want to purchase a house on the market for my first house because comparably what I can get for a self-build and something that's currently on the market, um, I wouldn't be able to afford a similar specification house. Josh, thanks very much. And let's put some of those points to you, Richard Baker. So he just says, Josh, that he cannot find these plots. You are trying to make a change. How are you going to change that? Well, one of the problems is that it's much easier for local planning authorities and local councils up and down the country to talk to a very small number of very large house builders, what we call developers, or it, they, they call themselves spec builders, which is a fairly pejorative term, but it's one they apply to themselves. And it tells you a lot of what you need to know, because we don't talk about spec furniture makers, but they talk about themselves as spec builders, and yet they control us very significant part of the land supply. Uh, my bill, the self-built and custom house building bill, which has got the support of the government and of the opposition, is very simple. It basically does two things. It requires local authorities to keep a register of people who are interested in doing this, not just a register of individuals, but a register of individuals and of groups of people who would like to do this, and then to ensure that local councils have regard to that. The problem is not Alison? land 